What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So today I wanted to talk to you about how to use the extension Scatter in order to create realistic landscapes and other things in your SketchUp models. Before I get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials Black Friday and Cyber Monday page. Uh, this page is where I keep a list of all the best deals that are going on um, for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and a lot of them are extending into this week as well. So if that's something you're interested in, you've had your eye on an extension. I know some like Placemaker and uh, and Profile Builder are on sale right now. If you've had an eye on those and you want to see uh, what kind of savings you can get, make sure you check that out at thesketchpotentials.com slash Black Friday. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so a lot of you know that what Scatter does is it allows you to randomly scatter objects inside your SketchUp models. What that does is that allows you to create really realistic landscapes. But one of the powerful things, and other things as well, but one of the powerful things about this extension is it allows you to do this um, while loading these objects in as proxies, meaning that uh, it'll load inside your rendering program, but they won't necessarily load in your SketchUp model, which means they won't crash your model with a large amount of geometry or anything like that. So a lot of the time what you end up using is for is things like plants, and I'm going to use the extension Inscape, the rendering program Inscape, in order to demonstrate this. Um, and one of the powerful things about Inscape is it allows you to render grass without you having to actually have grass geometry inside your model. Model. So this grass that I would apply to this object right here would get rendered within Inscape as grass without me actually having to um, without me actually having to add that grass geometry myself. So you can see how as I lower down Inscape, uh, Inscape will render grass in here. Well, when you use that in conjunction with Scatter, this gets really powerful because what you can do is let's go ahead and load the extension Scatter. Um, and I will note Scatter is on sale at least today as a part of the Black Friday. Um, sales. I don't know if it's going to stay on sale for the rest of the week or not, but you can check that out at the sketchpotentials.com slash Black Friday. But what it has is it has a library of objects that you can scatter, and then you can also scatter objects that you would like as well. Um, but you can scatter these inside your, ob inside your model. So let's say, for example, that I wanted some rocks in the grass here. What I could do is I could select this option for rocks 01, and you can see how it gives you the option for render only. What that means is when you do render only, that means it's going to load this in as a proxy model. And so when I click on this, you can see how this actually has three different rocks in here, but what it asked me for is it asked me for a host or a surface on which I want to spread this. So in this case, I'm going to click on this surface. And so you can see how when I click on this, this brings in a rock, and this rock gets a uh, this rock automatically gets brought in inside of Inscape as well, um, but you can adjust the settings here to set how many of these objects are going to be in here. So you can see how down here I can select the density. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to set the density to something like 0 0.008. You can see how that loads another rock in here. And uh, so for bigger faces though, so let's say, for example, that we'll go ahead and leave this. Let's say this face was way bigger. We were to regenerate this. So let's say we came in here and we adjusted this again. So maybe 007 or something like that. You can see how since this is a bigger face, this actually generates more rocks in here. So you're able to set the random spacing and everything else. And if I was to go into Inscape and look at these rocks, you can see how these rocks are actually getting rendered as geometry inside my SketchUp or inside my Inscape rendering, but without all of this uh, higher polygon geometry. Like if you look at these rocks, they're fairly high polygon. Um, without all this higher polygon geometry getting actually loaded inside of SketchUp and slowing everything down. And so what you could do in this case is you could actually add different objects in here as well. So let's say, for example, that I also wanted to add some flowers. So you can see how there's this option in here for Daisy 01. So in this case, we would select the option for proxies and render only, and we would click load. And so you could also spread a bunch of daisies on this rock as, on this this in this grass as well. So you can see how now, if I zoom in and I look at these, 
there's actually a bunch of daisies as well as a bunch of rocks inside this rendering. And you can see how it brought these in without me actually having to do anything. And so in this case, we'd probably bring this one down a little bit. So instead of 0 0.10, probably 0 0.05, and we'd go ahead and regenerate this. So we're able to scatter all of these different things inside of our model to make it look really realistic. And let's say that we also wanted to, I'll go back to my render list one more time, or I'll go back to my library one more time, and we could also add a couple bushes onto this face. So we would just load this in. And then it would ask us where we want to place the bush, and we could click on this face for the bushes as well. And so you can see how I can bring those bushes in, and you can actually create this kind of landscape in here, where we have flowers and bushes and rocks all inside your rendering without actually having to, without actually having to generate this geometry inside your model. So this is a really fast way to add these objects in a realistic way. So you could use this for trees and other things like that as well. And so in this case, if we were to go over and we were to look at this model, the model that I used for the Enscape grass tutorial you can see how I'm able to come in here and I'm actually able to scatter flower. So if I was to fly over in here, um, you can see how this model, which is a model I downloaded from the 3D Warehouse, um, I think it's the Mason Contemporane by SC Kristoff, but this is the, this is the, this is the model that I used for generating or uh, doing the tutorial on Enscape grass. But you can see how I'm able to come in here and add things like flowers to this grass really easily by doing this. And the other thing about that is if I was to go back and I was to find so the first scatter that I have in here, and generally it's a good idea to save these, but the first scatter that I had in here, it came in here and it scattered along this face, but it was also scattered along this area as well. So inside of this paint area. So if I remove that, and then I show you my rendering, you can see how this is scattering that geometry um, inside that paving area as well, which isn't what we want because that's not very realistic. So what you can do using scatter is you can add a clipping area. So what you can do is you can click in here and you can select a paint area and you can set it to exclude. And then you can paint along this area like this. So I can paint out where this uh, walk is to tell it to exclude along where that walk is. And you can see how what scatter will do is that'll actually remove the objects from that area. And then I can click regenerate. And now if I go back into Enscape, you can see how my flowers are in here, but not in my exclude area. So it's a really powerful way to be able to uh, only set the geometry where you want it to be. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Would you like to see more scatter tutorials? Um, I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.